Welcome to Bloomberg Markets. I'm Shanali Basak. We're watching investors retreat to safer corners of the market on indications that Iran is preparing to attack Israel. We're going to talk more about that, but first get a check on the markets. We are just off of session lows. The S&P 500 really looking at a decline of roughly 1% lower. You're seeing a bigger decline here in risk assets. The Nasdaq 100 now down 1.6% on the day, and the Russell 2000 around the same decline. The Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, even steeper decline there at 2.8 percent. Remember, this is the beloved semi-index that has been really bid on all year, but not faring well in the face of geopolitical conflict. Let's lift up the board here. Let's talk about the cross-asset movement, because that is where you're seeing some of the bulk of the moves. You are seeing New York crude hitting 3.7 percent uh, 3 higher on the day, an increase of $2.50 roughly. Brent crude 3.5 percent higher at a 74 handle. Also watching that bid in gold more than 1% higher today. And the VIX now at 18. We saw it reach more than 20 in the day a little bit earlier once the news had broken. But keeping an eye on that, volatility is elevated nonetheless. And breaking news we are following today as we've been talking about U.S. officials say that they think Iran is preparing to launch ballistic missiles against Israel. And this would be the second direct attack from Iran in on Israel in less than six months. Remember, Washington is preparing to defend Israel if Iran does strike and has warned that there will be severe consequences for Tehran. For more on this, we are joined by Bloomberg's Ian Marlowe, who covers U.S. foreign policy. He lives in Washington, close to the ground on the response there. But first, perhaps we go to what's happening across the world, Ian. What do we know about Israel's defense here as they prepare for what may be another missile attack? Yeah, what we know were that in the coming hours, um, potentially even uh, the New York Times is reporting uh, starting around 1230 uh, today, um, there could be uh, Ir Iranian ballistic missile attacks coming at targets in Israel, uh, like uh, the Mossad headquarters and, and military bases. So I think uh, everyone right now is on uh, heightened alert. The U.S. has increased its defense posture in the region. Uh, the last time there was an Iranian attack on Israel in April, uh, the U.S., Israel, and uh, Jordan helped shoot down uh, almost all of those projectiles. So at the moment, uh, you know, we've been told that from one Israeli official that they expect this response to be uh, even more substantial than the one uh, that came in April. Uh, obviously, because Israel has just taken out the, the leader of Hezbollah uh, over the weekend on Friday uh, and, and launched all sorts of attacks and a ground invasion uh, to some degree of, of southern Lebanon. So at the moment, everyone is uh, on edge, anticipating some kind of Iranian response. Uh, and then, of course, it's uh, from there, it's where do we go from there? How does Israel respond? What kind of casualties are there in Israel? Uh, and the U.S. has been concerned that uh, any sort of escalation here could prompt a regional war. So that's what everyone is looking out for at the moment. Well, perhaps describe the escalation, the one that we have seen in the last few days, as well as what we may see today. How does this start to change the narrative around what is happening in the Middle East and the U.S.'s response to it? Yeah, I think, uh, honestly, I think the success of Israel's uh, offensive against Hezbollah uh, has, has taken a lot of people, including the U.S. government, by surprise. Um, you know, uh, in, in the months after October 7th, the U.S. was warning Israel to, to stay away from Hezbollah, focus on Gaza, focus on getting a ceasefire and getting the hostages out. Uh, but Israel has, has pretty much ignored that advice, started going harder at Hezbollah because they have a bunch of displaced civilians from northern Israel. Israel that they want to get back into their homes and they can't do that, they say, until they take out some of this Hezbollah infrastructure along the border. So they've now, in the last couple of days, sent ground troops across the border into southern Lebanon, uh, which is the biggest escalation since the war with, uh, with Lebanon and Hezbollah in uh, 2006. So at the moment, uh, the U.S. is sort of uh, on guard to help Israel defend itself against any potential Iranian response. But U.S. officials have been warning that this kind of escalation uh, can quickly spiral out of control. So, you know, we don't know exactly what Iran's response will be. Depending on what that response achieves uh, on the ground in Israel, Israel will then have to respond in kind or uh, even harder. And so you just get into this escalatory cycle that then pulls 
uh, Iran and the U.S. potentially uh, into this. So at the moment, that's what people are trying to avoid. Uh, in April, that Iranian attack was successfully thwarted. So. Uh, I think there's maybe some expectation that they could try and do that again. But again, no one is ex uh, really sure exactly what this Iranian response is going to look like. We just know, you know, ballistic missiles and, and, and they're aiming potentially at, at military targets, which is mm -hmm. less severe in, in Israel's mind than, than kind of going after civilians. What have we heard, Ian, from Israel itself as well? I want to point out some of the remarks from an IDF spokesman earlier today that the attack from Iran might be on a wide scale and there will be consequences for launches towards Israel. What have we heard from the Netanyahu government? Yeah, I think we haven't heard. We're in kind of a bit of a fog of war situation here with, uh, you know, a response expected um, officials and sort of, uh, you know, leaks coming out uh, in terms of what the timing might be, what it might look like. You know, from Israel itself, what we what we have heard is that these are like the raid that they are doing on Lebanon, uh, the, the sort of ground incursions that they have done. They're just saying they're targeted, they're localized, they're aimed at taking out this uh, Hezbollah infrastructure along the border so that they can return residents. Israel says they are not seeking a broader war, but you have to, uh, you know, expect that if there is a large Iranian response um, that does achieve casualties in Israel, um, Israel will likely respond again. And Netanyahu has been quite clear in the past um, about viewing Iran as the primary, uh, mm -hmm. you know, nefarious actor in the region sponsoring all these proxy groups. So, you know, he's he has sometimes in the past not been content to only go after the proxy groups. Um, and so that's, I think, what, what people are fearing now is some all-out conflict between uh, Israel and Iran here. Yeah. Uh, Ian, thank you so very much for your time. I want to now uh, bring some more breaking news to our audience. Of course, in comments from an IDF spokesperson, IDF says rockets from Iran are fired at Israel. And they are noticing there that there are sirens as well. We will bring you more as it comes. Of course, we have limited information. An IDF spokesman says that the attack from Iran may be on a wide scale. And the IDF has instructed residents of central Israel to stay near shelters. We're going to bring in now Paul Salem for more on the Middle East. He is vice president at the Middle East Institute in Washington. And of course, uh, we are getting information throughout the day as it comes. But of course, since this morning, since the White House has communicated this attack and since we have seen Israel's response so far, and as we await to see what the fallout looks like over the next 24 hours, what are you looking for? Uh, well, it's good to be with you. Uh, I'm actually in, in Lebanon. Uh, I'm not in Washington currently, so I've been uh, uh, close hand uh, watching the operations uh, of uh, Israel in uh, Lebanon, the effects on Hezbollah, the effects on the Lebanese population, and now looking at the launch of missiles from Iran to Israel. Uh, obviously, the region is poised at a moment that uh, the U.S. administration and many in the region have been fearing the potential of a major outbreak of a major regional war. Uh, that will affect Israel, Iran, but it will also affect the Gulf and Gulf countries potentially if it got out of hand. Uh, so we don't know exactly what the scenario will be. Uh, I should say that uh, Iran uh, is at a very vulnerable position at this point. It has effectively lost the major deterrent power of Hezbollah, and Hezbollah was its major deterrent against Israel. Uh, Iranian leaders said that they would not retaliate on behalf of Hezbollah, Hezbollah would do that, that the, itself, but uh, Iran would just retaliate for things uh, relating to the assassination in Tehran and so on. So that might already limit uh, the scope. Secondly, uh, Iran has consistently said that they do not want to get dragged into a war of uh, Netanyahu's choosing. Uh, they accurately, cor uh, they correctly read uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's uh, intention now that he's weakened Hezbollah to direct his uh, uh, sort of targeting at Iran. Uh, Iran is very aware that the U.S. has all of its, you know, a lot of assets in the region, uh, and this is not a moment for Iran uh, to take such a big risk. Uh, we don't know what the Iranian decision is. Uh, a potential scenario might be something on a larger scale than happened in April, but also something more demonstrative rather than having a heavy impact that would drag Iran and Israel into direct war. Uh, I think the Iranian leadership is well aware that they're very vulnerable, and that's something they've been wanting to avoid. But in war, uh, miscalculations happen, 
uh, and that's almost a rule of war. I also want to recap the headlines as they are coming from uh, the IDF at the moment. Israel's IDF had, says, had said rockets from Iran have been fired at Israel. They say the rockets from Iran are fired toward Israel and that the missile attack has begun. Their sirens sounded across Israel. The IDF spokesman saying that the attack may be on a wide scale. The IDF also instructing residents of central Israel to stay near shelters. Just to recap what has been going on in the escalation of this conflict, uh, how does this start to change the dynamic, Paul, between what is happening between Israel, uh, between its, its neighbors, and the U.S.'s own involvement in the escalating conflict? Uh, well, I think we will know in a few hours. Either this is a largely demonstrative attack uh, Iran is a fair distance away from Israel. These uh, missiles will be tracked from their launch uh, through their uh, trajectory. U.S. has a lot of assets, U.S. partners in the region. As Ian, I think, mentioned previously, Jordan and other countries uh, shared data, shared information. Uh, and Israel obviously has a very effective, largely very effective Iron Dome, uh, David Sling, many other, many other systems. So either this will be, yes, a large-scale attack, as the attack in April was, maybe a larger one, that effectively is largely defended against and doesn't have major impacts, in which case it would have been largely a demonstrative uh, and not something that changes the dynamic dramatically. In that case, uh, the focus will still be on Israel's war in Lebanon and its attempt to fully uh, degrade Hezbollah's capacities. I think Israel uh, would not turn to a major sort of focus on Iran, uh, except a few months down the road, maybe after the U.S. election, after it knows who's going to be in the White House. Because confronting Iran or beginning systematic attacks on Iran, if that's something the Israeli government wants to do, is going to require a real buy-in from the U.S. And this current administration is certainly not bought into that. We should also say, again, just to keep also the audience updated here on what we know of the latest, it not only says, according to the IDF, the IDF not only says that uh, rockets from Iran have been fired, the IDF says all Israeli civilians are in bomb shelters. Paul, when we talk about the conflict and its escalation, you yourself, you said you are in Lebanon. What is it like on the ground at this moment, especially as the reaction that we're seeing today may inspire another reaction? Well, it's been a, a very dramatic uh, two weeks uh, in Lebanon since the pager uh, attack, uh, the attack by Israel on the pagers of 4,000 Hezbollah fighters, going all the way uh, to the assassination of the leader of Hezbollah uh, last Friday. Uh, and this amid hundreds of air uh, strikes throughout mainly the south of the country, uh, the eastern Bekaa Valley, which is the eastern part of the country, and the southern suburbs of Beirut, which is where uh, Hezbollah has a lot of positions. Uh, it has been a very, very destructive uh, campaign. Obviously, it's hit and largely, or to a large extent, crippled Hezbollah for the moment and kind of decapitated it for the moment. But it's also... Uh, killed hundreds of civilians, injured hundreds more, and displaced almost a million people uh, who have moved north and uh, moved to other parts of the country just to uh, get out of harm's way. Uh, it is the case that in targeting uh, Hezbollah, uh, uh, Hezbollah positions, uh, you know, Israel has sometimes warned civilians about that this is happening, but in many cases it has not. Uh, and this has uh, led to tremendous loss of life. So there's a lot of panic in the country. Uh, there's a lot of uh, distress. Hezbollah itself is in, uh, is in tremendous disarray. Uh, so really uh, a lot going on in the country. Earlier today, when the news first was reported regarding the missile attack and the prospect of it, there was a sense of a comparison almost of what we saw months ago back in April. But the war, uh, the conflict rather has escalated quite significantly since then. And do you see this being very different? Do you see this being non-comparable given where we have come from April till now? Well, it's very dangerous, you know. We'll soon know if it's comparable or not. But I should say that in the last two weeks, as things have escalated tremendously from Israel on Hezbollah and Lebanon, Iran has not escalated its rhetoric in the sense that it has remained 
uh, it, has, it has tried to be conciliatory, de-escalating, because as I said in the beginning, uh, Hezbollah is its main asset. Uh, without Hezbollah, it's going to be much, much weaker. It wants to preserve whatever is left of Hezbollah and wants to buy time, maybe years, to slowly rebuild it to the force it once was. And as I said, Iran is not ready for a major confrontation with Israel and the U.S. at this point. But at the same time, they're in this tight spot. You know, they are the leader of this axis of resistance. They've got to do something. So uh, if, if it's similar to April, uh, the April attacks, maybe a bit bigger, I think that would be the more likely. Uh, but if it's a much different attack with real damage in Israel, then we are in a state of direct war between Israel and Iran. I think uh, Israel will, will not hesitate uh, to hit a number of targets immediately uh, inside Iran, and that could just get into a back and forth. It will certainly then drag in the U.S. military. Uh, and I would fear, would the war just be contained to Israel and Iran, or would then damage spread to the Gulf countries, to the Persian Gulf, uh, which then affects uh, energy prices immediately, uh, and hence the global economy and, and trade routes and so on. That's the nightmare scenario uh, that everybody is hoping does not develop. Paul, stick with us for a moment here. I do also just want to shift gears for a moment because the market is having a fairly significant reaction to the escalating conflict as well. We are looking at declines in broader markets at the S&P 500. Of course, it is at or near session lows of 1.2 percent lower on the day. You're also watching the same go for the Nasdaq 100, nearly 2 percent lower. You're seeing that haven bid in the bond market as well. That is an investor flight to safety. And you are watching a yield rise on the two-year by the tune of about six, uh, six basis points. You have the VIX now elevated once again, closer to that 20 handle. You, yes, surpassing actually that 20 handle. And you see the most drastic movements, unsurprisingly here, when it comes to the energy markets. And you are seeing the whipsaw even more drastic than they were even moments before. When we began this hour, you only saw increases of about three, four percent. You are now looking at New York crude rushing higher by the tune of about 5%, nearly 5% higher. That is $3.26 higher. That is New York crude at a handle of 71. You are also watching uh, significant movements in Bitcoin and gold. Bitcoin lower as a risk asset, gold higher as that haven bid as we have been talking about. Now, Paul, just coming back to you here for a moment as well, you, you kind of talked about the uncertainty over the next couple of hours, uncertainty over the next 24 hours, but also the potential for even further escalation of conflict, as we saw over the last couple of days, and even more so now, as we see that the IDF says that Iran has begun the missile attack. Talk us through what you're watching for the next couple of days, given the concerns about even further escalation from here. Well, I think it's really the next couple of hours. We need to see what this attack shapes up to be, how many missiles, most importantly, how many make it through the various lines of defense that the U.S. and Israel and other partners have in the region, and to see if over the next few hours it causes a major damage, uh, maybe loss of life in Israel, uh, or it doesn't. I think if it doesn't, or if it's very, very minor, then I think it will not lead to a major escalation. Israel might do as it did in April, uh, have one or two demonstrative strikes inside Iran, uh, but that both sides sort of agree that this is not going to be a major escalation mediated by sort of international diplomats and so on. That's one scenario. Uh, and I would say maybe at, at this point, possibly the more likely one, but it could be a, a major attack and maybe a lot of missiles make it through all these lines of defense and causes uh, serious damage in Israel, in which case Israel will uh, stage a large number uh, of attacks on Iranian targets, and then it's up to Iran to respond as well. We are really in one of those pivotal historic moments uh, where military decision makers are holding the region sort of in, in their sway, and also uh, leaders, world leaders, whether it's the Biden administration uh, or others, uh, have a role to play uh, to make sure this doesn't go in the, in the direction that one fears it might. 
Paul, I want to bring more breaking news. As I said, we will bring you every headline as we get it. We have news from the Army radio that Iran has launched over 100 missiles. I will also say anybody watching on Bloomberg television and radio and with a Bloomberg terminal should follow Top Live on the terminal because we do have up-to-date, moment-by-moment updates here on what is happening. Uh, this is, remember, the second direct attack on uh, by Iran on Israel this year. A hundred ballistic missiles have been fired at Israel, according to the Israeli army radio. Local TV stations showing footage of missiles over key cities. What does this sound like to you, Paul, as we slowly get more information? I, I recognize that this is very early in the attack, but we are we are getting more information and want to understand how you uh, how you are gauging what the response is so far. Well, if we recall, in April, there were over 300 missiles and drones launched from Iran to Israel. Uh, so 100, if it's just 100 for now, that's a number one third of what was launched in April. Of course, you know, we're, as you say, we're just reading headlines as they come out. Uh, many more could be launched. Uh, uh, a big question is, uh, will Iran launch by itself? And that these are only missiles coming from Iran that take a fair amount of time to make it across all of that airspace. And there's a lot of uh, you know, equipment in place to track them and try to shoot them down? Or uh, will Iran activate its uh, allies throughout the region? Will Hezbollah join at the last minute? Because between uh, Hezbollah launch pads and Israel, that's a very short distance. Between launch pads in Iraq and Syria, it's also a shorter distance. So those are unknowns. Uh, but uh, uh, as you say, as I said, 100 right now is, is less than was fired in, uh, in April. It's Hence, maybe, you know, we'll have to see if it develops further. And one more time, wanting to recap the headlines, because, of course, they have been coming quite uh, fast and hot this hour, of course. We have from the IDF that Iran has begun its missile attack. Air raid sirens are sounding on central Israel. The attack came hours after the White House had warned that the missile attack was imminent. So, of course, the White House has been prepared. The Israeli government also saying that this is what they had expected. We have from the Israeli army radio that 100 missiles have been launched. We are waiting to hear more about what the fallout may be. Paul, before we let you go here, before we let you go here, can you tell us a little more about kind of the concern that you raised a little bit earlier on whether Iran is acting alone or with other proxies or with other allies? I, I, at this point, where are the frictions and allegiances starting to shape up across the Middle East? Well, Iran certainly commands a large group of proxies from Hezbollah in Lebanon to the Houthis uh, in Yemen and other militias in Iraq and Syria. It could. Uh, put pressure on them to launch simultaneously a bit later after they launch. Uh, I will say that in the, in the last few days and couple of weeks, Iran has uh, not said that they would all respond together. It has said that Hezbollah will respond uh, uh, to you know, attacks on Hezbollah, that they would respond on attacks on, on Tehran. Uh, so they have been saying that they would separate these things. Of course, we're in a war, so disinformation is is maybe the first rule of rule of war. So, you know, we really will have to see uh, whether this is a sort of just a pro forma uh, demonstration of revenge and uh, action to satisfy their domestic uh, supporters and some of their supporters in the region to show that they did something, uh, but short of something that would trigger a major war, or have they made a decision to cross the Rubicon and really go into a, a serious war with Israel and the U.S.? The second, I doubt, but we have to keep in mind also that Israel is feeling very triumphant, very powerful, uh, and how they react is something that the Iranians might miscalculate as well. I want to also acknowledge that this attack is coming on the eve of a vice presidential debate, perhaps the only one of this election cycle, heading into November in the United States. And if you take a look at how the world is watching the election cycle here in the United States and their reaction to the conflict in the Middle East, what are you thinking? What, what are governments around the world thinking in terms of the United States' role in this escalating conflict? 
Well, I think the world is seeing that the U.S., at least the U.S. administration, has really been powerless to influence its main ally, uh, Israel, uh, for the past year. The U.S. certainly supported uh, Israel's right to defend itself after the horrific attacks of October 7th. But within a, a you know very few weeks, uh, the Biden administration and the Netanyahu administration began to div diverge quite seriously uh, on the war in Gaza, on the end game of a two-state solution, and certainly they've been in bitter disagreement about any any uh, uh, expansion of the war uh, into Lebanon, and now that's happened as well. So I think the world is seeing that the U.S. definitely provides the support, uh, the military, and all of that. And we saw uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu really dominate U.S. Congress uh, with 50 standing ovations and so on, whereas the administration really seems feckless. Uh, and I think uh, Israel feels that between now and uh, the, uh, depending on who wins the election, that for a few months mm -hmm. they have a free hand uh, to do what they want. I would think they would be more concerned if President Trump won uh, that, yes, he would be supportive, but I think they would uh, maybe feel that he's a bit more of a tough customer. I think they feel right. that they've been able to push President Biden around, and they don't. They feel the same, perhaps, about Vice President Harris, unfortunately. Paul, we have to let you go here. Of course, we are looking at a live shot of Jerusalem as well. As we understand from the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces here, that the missile attack uh, from Iran on Israel has begun. We understand that there have been roughly 100 or over 100 ballistic missiles fired. We also want to take a look here at the market response as well, because certainly this is having an impact, particularly on oil prices. You are seeing a significant move higher on the heels of this attack, you are seeing crude oil roughly now almost 4.6 percent higher. Remember, that is much higher than we saw earlier today. We will keep an eye on everything as it comes. We will bring you live updates here at Bloomberg. And don't forget to also follow Top Live on the terminal. This is Bloomberg.